Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Burton's Media Group. In today's tutorial, we're going to create forward and backward movement using Script Canvas. This is based upon our previous tutorial on creating input bindings. So that has been added to the capsule. This is just a primitive capsule loaded from the system. We've got our input bindings already associated forward and backward. If you're not sure of the names of your input bindings, you can always open them up and check. So I've got forward and backward, both of them capitalized. Don't forget that your capsule also needs character physics to be added to the component. If you're not sure about that, just add component, physics, character physics. So that'll add that ability for mo motion into your system. I've also got my console open. Let's go ahead and get started on creating motion utilizing the script canvas. To start script canvas, go to tools, and click on script canvas and that'll load it up. This is version Lumberyard version 1.12. Script canvas is pretty easy to use. To get started with your new script canvas, you'll need to click on file and click on new script. I've already created one and saved it as movement. Now, the first thing that we need to do inside of our script canvas is create a variable. This variable is going to be used for storing how quickly I want the object to move forward or backward inside the environment. So we're going to click on create variable and number and drag that onto the screen and we're going to give it the name movement. Script canvas always uses a pound sign in front of variable names. There we go and I'm going to leave it with a value of zero to get started with. Now after we've got our variable set we need to get information from the input bindings. Specifically what input was clicked on. So typing in input into the search bar of the node palette, I'll grab the input handler. We're going to be looking for the forward command in this example. So there we have our forward. You can always right click. You can always right click and drag things around. Left click will select an object. Left click and drag will select multiple objects inside the script canvas. Okay, so I want to be able to output that the forward command was received by script canvas and be able to display that in the console of the application. That's to show that log information you need to go to the utilities debug and select log and that will output to console. So I can drag from the held down here to in and that will send a message to the console. Now right now that's a blank message so if I want to send something specific such as the forward button was pressed, I need to create a string variable in here. The display name doesn't make any difference. We're just wanting a value in it. So this is like a temp variable. So forward pressed, there we go. And we'll drag that get over here to value. And that will now, whenever the forward button, the W or the up on the D-pad is pressed, it will display in my console the value forward pressed. Okay, so let's next get the value of the information that's going to be passed. In this particular case, we need to get the information from movement. So going here to my local variables, there's movement. And I want to set the movement value for after the input is held. So I can drag here from held to in. Now that doesn't set a number for it. To set the number, I'm going to create another variable. And that's going to going to call it thrust and we're going to give it the value of 1 and connect the get to number and now the value of 1 will be put into set movement. Now that we've got a thrust set to the movement the reason why we're using thrust will become apparent when we do backwards. We'll use this exact same variable but we'll give it a, a different value. We'll set its value at negative 1 so that it, it moves backwards. Okay so now that we've got set movement ready Let's get the information about the capsule or our player character or avatar or whatever we're needing to affect inside the, the virtual environment that we're working in. To get its current location, we need to get the get world transform. The get world transform stores all the information about 
the object, which is self in this case, whatever object the input bindings are bound to. In this case, our capsule could be a car, could be our avatar, first person shooter, role playing game, whatever the case is, whatever we're interacting with is stored in that self. Get World Transform returns its location in the world, the direction, it's facing, its size, all the information about that object so that we can interact with it. So we want to take the information from our set movement and pass it to Get World Transform. From this Get World Transform, we want to create a new transform. So create from the transform, and this will be stored in our matrix 3 by 3. And there's our new create world or create from transform. This is creating from the values that were stored in the Get World Transform. So real simple here, out to in, transform to transform. And I'm going to scroll things over here a little bit. Next step is we need to get a specific piece of information out of the transform data that has been stored. This is currently stored in a matrix that is three by three. So back to high school math where you're dealing with matrices, uh, everything, it, it's three columns and three rows of numbers storing that information about what's happening inside this virtual environment. The forward movement is stored in a specific column. And that is the first column. But to get that data, we need to get that column of data. That's called get column stored in our matrix three by three. So we'll pull that over here. There's our get column for matrix three by three, out to in, matrix three by three to three by three. And our forward movement is stored in the index of one column. So we'll place a value of one in the index. To calculate how far to move the object forward, we need to do a little bit of multiplication. So we need to multiply by a number, multiply, and get our multiply. And we want specifically the vector three multiply by number. So go down to where you find vector three, multiply by number, there we go. And again, out to n, column to vector three. Now this is of course looking for a number to handle that movement what's happening inside that game environment. This might seem a little strange right now, but it makes sense when you add the backward movement. We need to add our get variable and specifically get movement. So there's the value that was stored in get movement. It'll make more sense when we add the, the backward and the stop features to this. Okay, one last thing to add before we can test it and that is to set the game, the object's velocity. So set velocity, and it's stored as it is underneath the physics. And this is just simply going to tell this object to start moving forward based upon its mass or density. And there we go. Now we can save this and try it out. So I'll pull this over. Before we can do anything, we need to include the code that we've just created, the script canvas that we've just created as part of this object. So you need to go to add component and scroll down to scripting and select script canvas. That'll add it to the component and then add your movement script canvas. And now the code is associated with the object. So when I press the W or the D pad up, we should move forward. So let's try that. Play the game, pressing the W, the object is moving forward. And you can see down in the console, I've got a forward pressed console thing. It will continue to move forward when you release the W because we haven't added any kind of stop. We've created a velocity to the object and it will continue to move forward based upon that. So let's add the ability to stop, which basically means when I stop pressing the button, the object stops moving forward. We'll rearrange our screen a little bit here to make that a little easier to view. So I'm going to select all of my movement associated objects and pull those down a little bit. And we're going to add a new variable and that is for stop. So variables, create variable, and this is going to be a number. And we're going to call it stop. Now we're going to reuse this variable. There we go. We're going to reuse this variable later on. So I'm going to just simply move it up here to the top with my movement variable. So it's just out of the way. But we're going to need it again when we do backward. Now that we've got that created, we'll go to our local variables back here to stop and do a get stop. There we go. And I'm going to 
also get movement, and this time set movement. There we go. So now, when the player releases the input handler, so there's release, it's going to activate the set movement using the stop with a zero value. When that happens, we're going to do our get will transform, and that will stop the movement of the object. So again, we'll save our file and pull this out of the way and see how that works. So there's play game, W, release, W, release. So now my capsule easily moves forward and stops when I release it. Hit the escape key to go back to editor mode out of gameplay mode. There we go. We've got a simple forward movement based in script canvas. Burton's Media Group has created additional resources for Amazon Lumberyard, including a full chapter on using Lua scripting or script canvas as, and creating objects to go in your game using Blender or GIMP. So utilizing full open source or free resources, we've shown, we can show you how to create a, a basic game. That book's now available at Burton's Media Group forward slash books. Uh, check it out and let us know what you think.